half and also to all of the deputies who have participated. Uh, very shortly we're going to move on to uh, topical issues um, and I want to welcome Minister Riker here to uh, respond to the first question which is in relation to plans to reform the pension system uh, in the name of Deputy Neve Smith. You have four minutes to put your case. Thank you, Chair. Minister, I have had numerous cases in my clinic of many retired and retiring people who have been adversely affected by the anomaly in how the entitlement to the state contributory pension is calculated. And I have been presented with many uh, situations where individuals, and dare I say mainly women, who have raised their families and are being penalised for having paid a small handful of PRSI payments, during which effectively amounts to a previous working life. Many spent a great portion of their lives providing a socially vital service. These women are now being doubly penalised. Not only have they secured not, no private pension entitlements for this period of their lives, but they are now being denied a full state pension. This clearly must change and requires immediate action. Consideration should be given to amend the calculation method for the contributory pensions. The system already disregards time spent working in the home since April 1994 for the purpose of calculating yearly average contributions. We should explore the feasibility of backdating uh, this further. Similarly, consideration should be given to allowing actual past payments to be disregarded, thereby altering the date at which the individual considered to have entered the uh, permanent workforce. Consideration should also be given to allow individuals to, to, be dis, to disregard up to 200 pre-1994 A1 PRSI payments for the purpose of calculating their entry, date of entry to the workforce. And I'll give you an example or two, Minister, of what I've come across in my, in my own constituency too. A lady has spent most of her married life working in the home. She entered the workforce for the first time in 2005, age 56. She will qualify for a full state pension in 2015, as she's paid an average of more than 48 weeks of PRSI contributions over the 10 years. But similarly, another lady entering the workforce at the age of 46 in 1995 has paid an average of more than 48 weeks of PRSI contributions over 20 years. However, this lady also worked briefly in the late 70s before getting married and staying in the home to raise her family. As a result, the Department of Social Protection averages her contributions over 37 years rather than 20. This reduces the pension that she's entitled to and creates a greater inequity in the system. Despite the fact that the second lady has paid more than twice as many PRSI contributions as the first, she will have her pension greatly reduced, while the first lady will be entitled to the first state contribution. Um, I would appreciate your comments on that, Minister. Thank you very much. Um, expenditure and pensions at approximately £7.3 is the largest block of expenditure in my department representing some 37% of all expenditure. Demographic change, such as longer life expectancy, which is welcome, of course, alone increases this by 220 million every year. Maintaining the rate of the state pension and its value is critical to protecting older people from poverty, and poverty rates in Ireland among older people are around 2% among the lowest in the world. State pension, the state pension system is comprised of a number of schemes based on criteria such as contributions paid, income, need and other factors. These ensure that people have an adequate standard of living in old age. The state pension contributory is one such scheme and its rate of payment is related to the contributions made over the years into the social insurance fund, which fund the scheme on a pay-as-you-go basis. As such, those who have paid more into the fund are more likely to be paid more under that scheme. The independent actuarial review of the fund in 2012 confirmed that the fund provides better value to females than male contributors on, on average due to the redistributive nature of the fund. Entitlement to the contributory pension is calculated by means of a yearly average calculation, where the total contributions paid are credited are divided by the duration in years uh, of the working life. Payments are banded. For example, someone with a yearly average of 52 weekly contributions will qualify for a full pension, whereas someone with a yearly average of 20 may qualify at the 85% rate. The homemaker scheme makes qualifications for the state pension contributory easier for those who take time out of the workforce for caring duties. The scheme, which was introduced in 1994, allows gaps of up to 20 years spent caring for children under 12 years of age or incapacitated people to be disregarded when a person's social insurance record is being averaged for pension purposes. 
homemakers still need to fulfil the eligibility requirements for that scheme and have paid at least 220 weekly contributions. The scheme is not retrospective and backdating it in respective periods before the introduction of, in 1994 would cost an estimated €290 million Euros every year. Where someone does not qualify for a full rate contributing pension, they may qualify for a means tested non contributory pension amounting to 95% of the maximum contributory rate. For example, a person with a yearly average of 20 qualifies for a reduced rate SPC of €202.80. However, unless their means are over €52.50 a week or €105 Euros a week for a married couple, they may instead be paid a non contributory pension of at least, least €204.50 which would bring their total pension means, including their pension, to over €257 Euros a week. Their household means test, of course, uh, ignores the state's spouse pension, the capital value of their home, and has a generous income and capital asset disregards where applicable. This €250 Euros doesn't include rent allowance, household benefits or fuel allowance. Alternatively, if their spouse is a state pensioner and they have significant household means, their most beneficial payment may be an increase for a qualified adult or IQA based on their personal means, which amounts up to 90% of a full contributory pension. Work is now underway to replace the yearly average system with a total contributions approach. Under this approach, the rate of the pension paid will, be more closely, will more closely reflect the total number of contributions made by people, not when, not, not when they paid them. The position of homemakers has been carefully considered in developing this new, this new system of, of uh, calculating the state pension contributory. It is expected that this approach to pension qualification will replace the current one from 2020. Following the completion of the actuarial review of the Social Insurance Fund later this year, a refined proposal will be developed. My department will conduct a period of consultation with relevant stakeholders, including interest groups, representative bodies in the Oireachtas. And following the consultation period, I will submit a proposal to government seeking approval for this, for this new approach. Thank you very much, Minister. Deputy, you have two minutes for a supplementary statement. Um, Minister, the homemaker scheme, which was introduced by Fianna Fáil in 1994, does qualify, make qualification for the contributory pension much easier for those who have taken time out of the workforce for caring duties. It allows up to 20 years spent caring for children under 12 years of age uh, to be disregarded when a person's social insurance record is being averaged for pension purposes. However, a problem arises for people who took time out of the workforce prior to 1994, as the number of years over which contributions are averaged is greater, reducing the average number of weeks worked and greatly reducing their entitlements. Minister, I know you've spoken a lot there. I do feel in my own experience, and I'm sure you have the same in your own clinics, that women are particularly um, vulnerable in, in this particular instance, and they seem to be the ones most affected by this inequity within the uh, pensions itself. Um, I know you talked about means testing pensions, but it still doesn't solve, and there are a lot of women uh, and men that fall through the net in terms of being qualified and being able to uh, get the state contributory pension. I am happy to hear there are measures being taken at the moment to uh, re-evaluate and look at this, but I would appeal to you to uh, take cognizance of this blatant inequality in the state contribution uh, pension. So many women are losing out because of the anomaly, and action is needed to bring equity for men and women who have given so much to society. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Smith. Two minutes, Minister, for a Sure, thanks. Uh, I suppose I'd, I'd just make, would make uh, two further points. And I, you know, I, I understand and I'm sympathetic to the case the Deputy is making. Um, the, the homemaker scheme was introduced by Fianna Fáil back in 1994. Um, and Fianna Fáil decided not to backdate it. And the reason why uh, the Minister at the time, Michael Woods, decided not to backdate it uh, was because of the very high cost in, in doing so. Uh, we estimate that the cost of doing so uh, would now be about €290 million Euros a year. Uh, and obviously, when budget time comes around and you're Minister for Social Protection, you have to decide how best you're going to use additional resources. Uh, do you target those additional resources, as, as I sought to do, um, on those who need it the most, uh, the people uh, who are the poorest in our society, and that's why uh, I put the resources behind job seekers benefit, one parent family payment, uh, widows, blind, carers and disabled. Uh, or do you give those resources instead uh, to people who don't qualify for means tested payment at all, uh, who are generally people who are a bit better off? Uh, and that's the dilemma that's in front of any, uh, of any minister at budget time. Of course you'd like to do both, but if you have to choose, um, uh, you, you tend to choose, uh, I, I would hope, um, those means tested payments paid to those who are, who, who, who are the poorest in our society. Um, the future, though, is, is, it, is the new to total contributions approach. Um, I listened to the uh, example you gave, and it is anomalous to me that people who 
um, paying more contributions, get a lesser pension just because they paid them at the wrong time or over a longer period of time. But we have worked out from our initial calculations to do anything that's budget neutral, uh, you would need to be making about 35 years of contributions to get a full pension. Now that's pretty normal. That's what it is for you know, people in employment, for public servants. Uh, but you could also, in doing so, create a lot of people who end up much worse off as well. Uh, and any change to the rules, as always, uh, produces winners and losers, unless you put a lot of extra money into the system. Uh, so what I intend to do is to present to the committee a whole set of options and costings and consult with them on how we go forward. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Bradkirk. We'll move on to topic issue number two. I want to welcome Minister.